everyone, and welcome to another video. How is everyone doing? Well, in today's video, we're diving into a match with a different breed of players. I'm going up against Kindred, and based on my experience, this champion is easily one of the toughest to deal with in League of Legends. Of course, we start the game like usual. Both bot laners, for some unknown reason, seem to forget they're in a ranked match. Instead, they come to lane, start watching Netflix, or maybe even have a casual phone call, completely ignoring what's happening in the game. In this situation, someone died, and I believe Caitlyn burned some of her summoner spells as well. This misplay puts us in a tough spot, but it also gives us the chance to step up and pull off one of those games. Of course, the old me, with my old mental, would have said, you know what, let's just forsake this useless bot side. But since we're playing against such a tough matchup, we need to create a strong side to carry this game. Normally, Leona is a solid support, great for maintaining aggression and keeping the tempo high. But in this case, bot lane is struggling hard. On top of that, Ambessa in the top lane is almost impossible to gank. The champion has insane mobility, making it difficult to lock down. And we're also dealing with Kindred. Dealing with Kindred is another nightmare. They're constantly dancing over walls, and unless you catch them completely off guard, it's nearly impossible to secure a kill. In this situation, the bot side was struggling so much that we started losing momentum in the game. But I made the conscious decision to focus my efforts there, bringing bot lane back into the game so we could actually have a fighting chance. Now, looking at the broader state of the game, I don't think there's a huge gap in the picks themselves. This match will come down to which team has the better players. I believe our top side, with Gwen, should hold her own against Ambessa. For us, the real concern is Cassadin hitting level 16 and hitting his full build. If that happens, he becomes a massive threat. However, if we play it smart, build properly and make the right calls, I don't think we'll have much to worry about. The game right now is in a dire state. It's spiraling down the drain faster than I'd like to admit. The only bright spot so far is the top side, which is holding its ground. Mid lane, however, is a complete disaster. Our Zed is clueless. He didn't even make a single viable call since the start, and he took Ignite and Teleport. Not questioning his call, but very suspicious indeed. Meanwhile, most of the action and plays are happening around the bot side, and if we don't make something happen in the next few minutes, we'll lose this game before it even reaches the mid-game. Thankfully, against their composition, it's manageable. As long as we dodge Thresh's crowd control, it should be straightforward to pull off a successful play. And even in the worst-case scenario, if we fail and end up trading kills, that's still fine since we're already losing. At this point, any form of pressure is better than doing nothing. At this instant, Kindred is focusing on empowering their top laner, Ambessa, while on the other hand, we're trying to play around the bot side. Anything that gives us an extra dash or repositioning tool is invaluable, especially in a game like this. The reason for Protobelt is simple. Catching Kindred early on is extremely difficult. Her dash isn't affected by her movement speed, meaning we need a way to close the gap more effectively. Protobelt gives us that chance by providing an additional dash, making it possible to chase that thing. On the other hand, the team morale is in the gutter. For some unknown reason, probably because we've been losing since the start, players are getting frustrated. Instead of focusing on the game, they're counting deaths, spamming pings, or even hovering over the surrender button. It's a disaster, but that's just the kind of challenge we're dealing with in this match. The only positive thing I can do at this point is trying to boost the team's morale. On the bright side, we've secured three drakes, so at least we're not behind in the drake count. The real issue was the herald play. I wanted to give the gold to Gwen, but unfortunately we didn't group effectively for it. My hope was to empower Gwen to dominate topside and help create pressure across the map, but we couldn't fully execute that plan. Additionally, I miscalculated the distance needed to land a clean curve on the herald's charge, which wasted some of its potential. However, we still managed to funnel most of the gold into Gwen, making her strong and reliable enough to turn around several fights. Our strategy now is to play for split pushing, leveraging Gwen's strength to pressure multiple lanes. Regarding the build in this specific game, considering the enemy team only has damage dealers, I decided that going for Winter's approach was the best call. It provides HP and consistent shields, which are crucial for staying alive and sustaining through fights. Since I can't afford to build AP and we're struggling against Kindred, the most practical solution is to stack HP. When in doubt, Prioritize HP. It's a solid core stat for survivability. If you're running conditioning, it's even better because it provides a scaling boost to your resistances. Right now, I was planning to make some aggressive calls to secure the Drake easily, is where I made a mistake. I didn't consider that our team was a little behind and that we didn't have all of our ultimates available. We paid the price for that. The funny thing is, even though we had priority over the objective, the team just wasn't in the mood to play the game. I tried to communicate 
typing, Hey guys, let's go for the Drake. I have the teleport and can join you. But no one was responding. It felt like nobody cared about the game at all, and the lack of communication just made everything worse. I can say with certainty that this team is easily the most useless team I've ever played with under these conditions. It feels like they're just a bunch of people who are stuck in the game, not really trying to make anything happen. They only seem to play when things are going well, but as soon as we start losing, it's like they expect someone else to carry them. It's frustrating because you can see the potential, but they just don't put in the effort unless they're winning. But honestly, that's totally fine by me. I never depended on anyone in this game. I picked this specific rune setup so that I could become a one-man army if needed. Of course, nothing is guaranteed, but at least I know I can control my own actions. The only thing we can do is dictate the pace of the game through our own decisions. Now, the sad life of a jungler. This fellow player is here because they couldn't handle the difference. Not in our skill, but in our experience. My skills may be lacking, but I make up for that with all the back and forth with runes and itemization constantly adapting. Meanwhile, he went for the high crit kindred damage build with the same runes you'll find on any analytics website. I know I'll lose the duel, but what I care about is winning the game my way. Now, everything I've said about my team has made for a better case study compared to the other team. On paper and in the scoreboard, it looks like the enemy team is having a much smoother time than we are. But in this situation, everyone is blaming everyone else. This jungler is the truth and proof of what happens when you ask everyone to play your game. Not everyone is cut out for the same approach, and that's the harsh truth about gaming. We all have different play styles, and sometimes you find yourself playing a game that doesn't suit your way of thinking or your strategy. Now, of course, we were lucky enough to stay in this game at this losing state, where it feels like we're barely hanging on. Enemy teams still have a chance to come back, especially with the power spikes ahead. Once their champions hit level 16, they're no longer just normal champions. Additionally, kindred scaling is unlimited. Everyone will start getting one shot. They also have a lot of potential with Ambessa. So what we need to do right now is group up as a team, push together, and hope for the best. As for my fourth and fifth items, I was thinking about going for Zeke's and Frozen Heart because I need to stay alive and disrupt the enemy team. We already have a lot of damage with Gwen and Caitlyn, so my role here is to peel for them. To do that, I'll need some form of sustain and durability, which is why those two items are crucial for this scenario. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel, leave a like and comment below. Until the next video, take care and peace.